That's Nextel helping NASCAR and NASCAR fans get things done. He gets our Nextel getting it done call of the race. Well, you know, I, I think that you got to give it to, uh, you were going to say the two car, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like Mark Martin. I like the job he's done today. And that, Larry. like you said, that crew, yeah. I, I'm going to go, maybe not a call of the race, I'm going to go a call of the weekend. Kurt Busch, that two car, they're here without their crew chief, Roy McCauley, who's home with his wife, Amy. They crashed in practice. They unloaded a backup car. They led this race, and had it not been for that caution back on lap 292, they obviously all weekend long, like next day, they've been getting it done. I'm going to go with Montoya. He and David Stremmies battled his teammate much of the day. But Montoya made that rookie mistake getting in the left side of his pit box. But every time they told him leaders come and you got to push the button, he has. He's responded, kept uh, this number 42 not just on the lead lap, but in a position to where he might just get his second top five finish of the year. Good call. Not sure Tony would agree, but uh, <laughs> good call. 12 drivers make the chase for the next Tell Cup. Montoya came in here 16th in points. Right now he is 13th. 14 points back of Mark Martin. This is the first racetrack we've been to that he's actually raced on before. He ran the Bush Series race here back in the fall. Every other racetrack, he's had to look at a map just to see where it's located almost. <laughs> did Jeff Gordon get in the wall again? Well, let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Rick yeah. Biffle just did. Well, the whole... The whole right side of the 24 car is scraped wow. up big time. Boy, turn four has been busy today. Cars just won't turn off that corner. Late in the race, slick. Steve? Yeah, I want to add to what DW said. Uh, it was like all of a sudden, Daryl, he said, I don't know what happened. I just got big time tight. Next thing I knew, I was in the wall. I, 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 what little I've driven here through the years, uh, that's what this joint does. Got the wheels turned, you're coming off the corner, everything's fine. Lou's got all the grip all at once. And the thing I'm seeing right now as we see this battle between Jeff Burton and Mark Martin for fourth is right now Jeff Gordon, our leader, he's about the slowest of the top 10 or 12 cars as far as lap times. And you can see that 17 car just reeling them in slowly but surely, 22 laps to go. Yeah, it damaged that. That, that car hit the wall hard. I look at the right side when he went by, and the right side tires are all scuffed up, and the body's all banged in. That's a pretty hard lick there, boys. I'm sure it's it affected the right front fender, plus it looks more likely bent the toe, and the car's just not driving like he wants it to now by any way, by any means. And Matt Kenson really got through one and two good that last time. You can see he's about a car length behind Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Well, uh, Matt may just have himself a sweep. Be the second one of the year for him. Did it at Fontana. Kevin Harvick did it today, Tony. It seems to be the nature of the beast. And he just turns to the bottom here through one and two. And he'll take the lead coming off two, going down the back straightaway. Gordon's Gotta be fight careful. Back. Gotta be careful right there, man. You get under the car on the outside of you. That's Jeff Gordon's car on the outside. I'm telling you. And here's third place, Jeff Burton, coming back after Greg Biffle. Two Chevys, two Fords fight for the front four spots. This track gets so slick and you lose so much grip late in the race on corner exit. That's exactly what happened. It's what happened to Tony when he wrecked. Almost happened to uh, Matt Kenseth right there. He'll have to set Jeff up and get him in a different spot. But Jeff's definitely a setting duck right now. What about Kenseth and that tire, Dick? Well, Kenseth just came back on the radio mic and said, I'm telling you, that right rear has a leak. So <laughs> Kenseth in second spot, possible tire going down. Right now, we're going to have 18 laps to go as they come to the strike. There you see the battle on the right-hand side of your screen. That's a battle for the seventh position. I just believe they run so much right rear spring in these cars here to make them turn that it makes that right rear feel like it's going away sometime. Now, Greg Biffle, we saw him slap the wall coming out of turn four. Mark Martin passed Biffle. Uh, Mark Martin passing him right now. Jeff Burton passed him, and Mark goes by as Kenseth has a look at the lead. Yeah, this is the way. Gordon to, gives him room. This is the way to do it here now. You get on the outside. 
And you should be able to carry that momentum off of turn two, just like we saw Jeff Gordon do earlier. There you see Kenseth's able to get in the gas, stay in the gas, and he'll take, take the lead. We got battles all over the place. Had the eighth place battle upper right, where Martin Truex passes David Stremme. And on the left, Mark Martin has gone by Greg Biffle. That's for fourth. Now, in between those two battles on top is Montoya. And uh, Jeff Burton is about to catch him. I think Jeff Burton is somebody that Matt Kenseth may have to worry about before this thing ends. I think you're right. Well, when I look at the lap times, there's no question. Jeff Burton, that 31 car with 16 to go, he's got the fastest car on the track right now. There's Burton. 1.3 seconds back of the leader. And closing fast. And Denny Hamlin, after fighting for 200-some laps to get back on the lead lap, he's now battling David Stremme for ninth. But you know, Daryl, I can't help but think about, and you talked about this in the pre-race, Jeff Burton, a thinking man's race, he was, I think he was conserving his race car, saving it. He knew he wanted to be here for the end of this thing. Just keep those guys in sight. Uh, Jeff Burton, somebody you never want to, you always want to remember he's still on the, when he's still on the racetrack, he's still got a chance to win. You see right now, he's on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. These two guys are having a pretty good go of it here for ninth and 10th. Give a call to Stremme. He's about to get his first career top 10 finish in his 45th Nextel Cup start. Well, Denny Hamlin is going to knock him back to the 10th position in the 11 car working on him as they go down the back straightaway. There'll be 13 to go next time. Here comes Jeff Burton in that 31 car. Drove to the bottom of that racetrack. He takes second place away from Gordon. Got his sight set on Matt Kids. You know, this kind of is reminiscent of Dover last year when Burton and Kenseth uh, had such a great battle. Burton finally put the move on Kenseth to win the race. I think he may be able to do it again today. Jeff Burton this year has finishes a third, fourth, fifteenth at Vegas is worst, fourth, second, and sixth. Everything but a W, and he is three car lengths back of Matt Kenseth for that. And just think about his teammates. They have had a terrible day, and here this 31 car is Richard Childress car, right up there, set, poised to win this race. And Mike, you were talking earlier, we've been talking to all day long, 12 races, 12 different winners. Jeff Burton in the 31 car, he won the very first Texas race in 1997. In fact, it was his first career win. Matt Kenseth right now is set to try to keep that car on the bottom. You can see Jeff Burton on the 31 starting to work the high side. But I, I just I know I keep referring to yesterday, but Kenseth was in the same battle yesterday with Denny Hamlin. And Kenseth made the pass on the outside, but then he had to go to the inside to block. And he ended up making the finish in the race on the outside because Hamlin couldn't make the pass on the inside. So where do you want to be? I want to be on the outside. You saw what happened to him over there. Right. Of course, Jeff Burton is so quick through the center of the corner if he ever gets position. But man, that's the hard thing is get that position to clear that car and move up in front of him. Yeah, he could now, not complete the pass at either end being on the bottom of the racetrack. You just got one be. for the, you won't believe this. The five car is back on track. After Kyle being Bush. involved in that crash, the driver is Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> that's interesting. Sure is. Kyle apparently had left the racetrack thinking the car had been withdrawn. We're not sure of that. We're making that assumption. They needed a driver, and there was Junior. We've got a battle for third here between Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and that 01 car. But while we're watching that battle, Jeff Burton just lost a lot of ground off turn four, but he's fighting back over there in turn one and two. There you see the battle on the left. Be eight to go next time to the line. I think Kent is having to do what he was going to say for late for these last few laps. Move up the racetrack because you can't make that pass on the bottom. We saw that over there just a moment ago, although Mark Martin slides right on past Jeff uh, Jeff. Gordon there. Well, true grit. Mark Martin takes over third place as Gordon pedals it just a bit. And you know, we talk about points. This is important for the again race for again racing the owner of this car because he's six in owner points. Kenseth a little wobble and Burton a bigger wobble coming off turn two. That's happened twice in the last two laps. Once in turn four, once in turn two. 
Ken says he's got to be careful not get too high up that hill. But as long as he runs that high line like that, I don't believe Burton can get him. Jeff Burton's wife, Kim, looking on. Charting the laps from the pit box, as many of the driver's wives do. You know why? It keeps them involved. It keeps them from sitting over in the motor coach worrying themselves to death. She's got a headset on. She knows what's going on. Robbie Reiser, Jack Roush. As the laps wind down, Kenseth up the hill just a bit, way up the hill. Yeah, that's a little bit too high up the hill right there. Burton closes right back up. Six to go. Kenseth has had two nail biters uh, in the last two days, I can tell you. He was in this same battle yesterday. They have a pretty clean racetrack in front of them, and you just see he's starting to continue to work that high side. Burton can get there in the middle of the corner, but he can't complete the pass on the exit. I believe if Burton could get, he gets through the center right here. Watch him. He's going to close, 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 but then the momentum of that high line, and Kenseth's able to pull off. It's seventh place battle on the right. Martin Truex keeps digging. Oh, Montoya slides in. He's not going to hold give up. position. Yeah, Martin, Martin was very kind to him there. Gave him a lot of room. I think this is cat and mouse in the front right here, though. Uh, and you see it again. The one car on the bottom, he can't quite complete the pass on Juan Montoya. Same thing down here with our leaders. You just can't quite, quite complete that pass when you're stuck on the bottom like that. Well, I know what, with four to go, it looks like it's uh, getting ready for one of these classic Texas finish here. Well, it's not the OK Corral, but it's pretty close. <laughs> Denny Hamlin in the midst of that battle for seventh as well. Here comes Burton again. Whoa, He's really going to have to get aggressive I tell you, to though, draw even with Kenseth. Yeah, but Kenseth got up the hill a little too far, but he's able to pull it down and come off ahead of Burton. Three to go, three to go. I tell you, you got to be careful not get up there too high. <laughs> I think Kim Burton, she's forgot about keeping up with laps. She knows there's three to go. Burton got a pretty good yep. run there. He got to the door. Yeah, he's at, now this could be that he could make it this time. He got to Kenseth's door, but couldn't. Draw he, fully he, alongside. He could make it this time because he got enough run on him. It's going to take a pretty good effort right here for Kenseth to hold him down. Might have to get a little physical here. Nah, he's not going to do it. Yes, he is. They'll be yeah. side by side. Two to go. It's, if he can inch up there like that, I'm telling you, he can get it done because that center of the corner right there, if he could just gas it up a little harder. Daryl, he is driving that thing down in the corner right now. Lap and a half to go, halfway down the back straightaway. <laughs> you heard how much he feathered oh, yeah. the throttle to stay off of Kenseth. You know, Burton's got to be thinking, more. how many times am I going to find myself in this position? Oh, about twice more. That's how many laps to go. Lap and a half. Burton the leader here. Kenseth has the drive off the corner. And side at the white side. flag, it's Kenseth. Yeah. One lap to go. This is it, boys. Can he do it? Burton on the inside. Kenseth on the outside, Burton That's made as far as he's been. He, he, made as far as he got him. him. He got Clear. him. He got him. He got him. Clear, clear, clear. He got him. Yeah. Yeah. Him. Buddy, bring it home. Bring her home. He got him now. Kenseth got into the, this up a little too high off of two. Be smooth, man. Be smooth. He's going to get a run off. It's all yours. Bring yeah. it home. Jeff Burton comes off the corner. Yeah. Jeff Burton, the first repeat winner in Texas Motor Speedway. Oh. Winning the Samsung 500 after a fierce duel with former teammate Matt Kenseth. And Jamie McMurray got his teammate Greg Biffle there at the by line to finish fifth. By an inch. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He just barely slipped by him.